This is a jet-powered hand dryer, and this is a jet-powered hair dryer. Two appliances that you didn't know you needed. Now when I say jet, I don't mean a jet of air, but a literal aircraft jet engine that burns fuel to spin a turbine so fast that the sound is almost deafening. Now pretentious hand and hair dryer companies often tout their proprietary methods of breezing your body. And though they can be clever, ultimately it's just a bunch of hot air. So in this video, I'm gonna throw more hot air at hands and hair than any of them ever have before, and end up with some results that I wouldn't have even believed if I hadn't seen it myself. Now this all started as a bit of a goof. I got this small jet engine in the mail, but it arrived a bit too late to use for the Landspeeder drag race. So it just sat in its box waiting to get sent back to my friend Daps. But he didn't actually need it back right away. And that's when the intrusive thoughts started to win. You see, I recently found a broken hand dryer for a few dollars at a thrift store. What is that? Can't you tell? And the funny thing about hand dryers is that they are kind of like a jet engine. A hand dryer throws hot air at your wet limbs in an attempt to remove the water through evaporation and just pushing the water off. Whereas a jet engine throws hot air at whatever is behind it in an attempt to push you into the danger zone. But while hand dryers and hair dryers have to use both a fan and a heating element to create warm air, a jet engine just burns stuff. And for us, this is critical, because even though a hand dryer has nowhere near the power of a jet engine, it still sucks enough electricity to make my lights dim. And since electricity in the US is primarily generated through the burning of fossil fuels, by using a jet engine that burns them directly, we're just cutting out the middleman. Does that mean that the diesel-powered jet engine will be more energy efficient? Well, that all depends on how long it takes to dry your hands with a jet hand dryer compared to this regular old electric one. So it was time for my brother and I to do some serious science. Sir, we need a specimen. <laughs> with hands dipped, we put our hastily mounted hand dryer to the test. 40, basically 40 seconds. I can touch them and they are dry. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Dry. 34 seconds. I'm gonna do a one-handed test just because we might need it. 23 seconds. And with our baseline testing done, I started working on mounting the jet engine while my brother began building a robust test stand. Now you just need to paint Live, Laugh, Love on the front. Live, laugh, love, dance, dream, cherish, remember, dance. Drilling a bigger hole in the stainless enclosure was less than straightforward. So for the sake of time, I just hacked it. The base plate required very little modification, just a couple spacers, brackets, and a giant hole for an air intake. And with the jet circuits and fuel tank mounted to the back, this ridiculous idea was suddenly a reality. But that reality was nothing compared to the moment that I mounted my custom handle for the hair dryer. There are few feelings in this world quite like the first time that you hold a jet engine on a stick. And as far as consumer products go, this one will definitely evoke a strong emotional response. Puissance, intensité. Qu'est-ce que vous avez dit? Je pense que j'ai des acouphènes. J'ai un. Be blown away. So we built the hand dryer, the hair dryer, have a rock solid marketing campaign, and my friend David is cool with us testing in his parking lot, even though he doesn't know what we're testing yet. So you don't know what it is. I mean, it's a board. So I have built the world's most powerful hand dryer. Okay, I knew it was something. And while I got the engine mounted and fuel system primed, my friends were busy prepping our test subjects. Hey Joel, do you need a hand? With some minor safety considerations in place, it was finally time to start our engine. This is test number one. We're booting up the world's most powerful hand dryer. Or so we thought. Saying low temperature. And as always, in our time of need, David was at the ready with another valuable contribution. Well, we, need, we need high temperature for this hot pocket. I tried warming the intake air with a heat gun, but eventually we realized it just didn't like to be started vertically. But once it was started, it spooled up to full throttle beautifully. All right! All right! All right, at least we know. <laughs> Let's get some hands. It was important to know what we were up against, so I wanted to start with a worst case scenario. Now on a normal hand dryer, the worst case scenario is best summed up by the Dyson guy. You put your hands under the dryer, rub them a bit, then give up and wipe your hands on your trousers. Worst case with a jet engine is something more like this. Oh, 
So too close for too long equals too hot. And a 20 pound sandbag is not enough. And after everyone got first hand experience, I started with the actual testing. I first thought that maybe if your hands were further away from the engine, the air might be cool enough to be safe. Unfortunately, the thermal camera revealed that at even a few feet away, it was still hot enough to boil water, and therefore, your hands. I wanna see if I can dry this hand without melting it. But what if we just passed the hand under the jet very briefly? This proved more difficult to test than you might think, because the sheer force of the exhaust would immediately smack the hand out of the way, especially when you were trying to do it one-handed. But even so, the early results were surprisingly promising. Since I was doing this mostly as a goof, I couldn't believe I was suddenly holding an unburnt and fully dry plastic hand that had been dipped in a bucket of water just moments before. It did it! That quick little pass worked better than I thought with that other plastic hand that was already a little bit melted from something else. So what we're gonna do is test it with this hand and we're gonna see what temperature is it once it's dry after passing through at full throttle. Can you actually dry your hands with a jet engine? I gave the throttle to David so that I could use both my hands to stabilize the rod, gave the test piece a fresh dip, lined up, signaled full throttle, and gave it my best. In just under three seconds of drying, the temperatures recorded immediately after were still well within safety levels, and the water was gone, meaning drying your hands with a jet engine was surprisingly plausible. That blasted all the water off, like, instantaneously. I was even tempted to do it myself. I don't want to try it. Yeah, right, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. I need these hands. With the hand dryer securing a surprising victory, you'd think that I'd be optimistic about the hair dryer too, but having stood that close to the wash of the jet engine, the idea of turning on this handheld version was intimidating. But we've come all this way, and I have safety gear, and hey, you're gonna subscribe if I do it, right? Screw it. We loaded up a dampened dummy with real human hair and booted up. Since the cables for the engine aren't very long, I was forced to stand in place as it slowly, suspensefully spun faster and faster, and by the time it finally reached idle, I could already feel the force of the thrust. As I began carefully giving it power, you should know, from the moment the trigger is pulled, it takes a few seconds for the engine to catch up, which created a terrifying back and forth of slowly giving it more and more power and then bracing and hoping that it wasn't too much. It's very hard to brace for forces that come on so suddenly as the thrust curve felt very non-linear. I think I only reached full throttle maybe once, but with such a short leash, it proved to be too much to contain and disaster struck. That's only got 30 pounds of thrust. What? That can't be 30 pounds! That's gotta be way more than that! <laughs> Thankfully, the engine and the controls were just fine, but the engine control cable now had a bad connection. And with a moment to reflect, I was almost That's, speechless. This is the dumbest thing ever! That was so... It's... You have no idea what it feels like! It looks it's, crazy. It's not fun. Our dummy was surprisingly left with minimal damage, a decent amount of moisture removed, and great lift. So before the broken cable shut down our little experiment, what did we learn? Jet hand dryers can dry almost 10 times faster than a normal unit, but unless we can find a way around their long startup times, it's definitely not more energy efficient. And jet hair dryers are ultimately cost prohibitive, since you'll have to hire a strong person to aim them at you from across your bathroom. Now, plausible or not, please don't ever put any part of you in front of or behind a jet engine. But thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.